Hello everyone and welcome to Sony Games Solo Time. My name is Joachim and today we'll be continuing Stars of Kairos. As you can see, there's not much set up. We have the, the map here and then the scenario book that we don't need for now because we're continuing after scenario five and we're doing space exploration now. Okay, so I'm going to be explaining it a little bit as I'm going along as well. I'm exploring together with you guys. All right. So basically when they say do space exploration, you just need the space exploration deck of the system that you're in. So I was here, but they instructed me to go there. So I went from 1.1 1 .1, uh, to 2.2, uh, 2.1, 2. Uh, 2 sorry. And now my options are to go up to 2.2 or right to 3.1. But as a sparrow, you can do multiple things. But whatever you do, you always spend one supply. At the moment, I have three. So if I'm ever at zero supply and I want to do an action that requires uh, a supply, my pilot stress will go up by one. And uh, so my next combat mission, I will have one stress. Okay. And it will not be reduced until the sparrow has one supply again. Um, or also um, after, what was it again? After, after, after. Will not reset to zero until either the sparrow has supply greater than zero or at the end of a space combat or world exploration scenario. Yeah, so that figures. So what are the things that you can do? Uh, you can explore and move, which is what we will be doing shortly. Then if there is a certain icon on it, you can scout. Basically, this is the icon. Then you can scout. So 001 was the first scenario. Okay, so those are scenarios. Then there's also a docking uh, icon, which is basically a ship that points downwards, right? And then you you can do more stuff there might be a market might be other stuff you know and there's also a basic move that you can do and also a jump point and that has a little spiral basically like a some kind of portal okay so basically explore and move is what we're going to do and then it can be a bunch of stuff but most importantly i wrote down 3.2 so i want to go to 3.2 so to go to 3.2 i imagine i have to go to 3.1 which would mean to the right so that's what i'm going to do so in this deck i'm going to look for 3.1 here we go then i'm going to flip it over there we go boom and i also reduce my supply of the sparrow by one so we now have two supply all right so there's a bunch of stuff here well two things here that are that uh, are interesting the 007 is of course a scenario that we can go and check out but you also have an explicit exclamation mark here at the bottom left here we go there and that is an event okay so if the sparrow explores and moves into a sector with a space event icon immediately draw a space effect card space event card at random from the system's event deck read the, and then make the choices and so on and then once you've done the event it'll be gone forever in this campaign you don't destroy it it's just not using this campaign again so it is now uh 2 18 a.m here so 18 past uh, 2 <laughs> um so i'm just going to add up so it's 3 11 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11. so this is the event that i'm choosing because there's only two events difficult to do random um so here if event adrifts closing in on the signal the sparrow draws within range of a small freight freight hauler at first, it appears to be completely inert. However, a closer inspection reveals that it is, in fact, active, although barely. It's running on minimum power for some reason. As if in greeting, a short data stream is emitted from the vessel. It turns out to be simple text. Fuel cell ruptured, backup nearly empty, minimum power life support failing, please help. They must really be on low power if they're not willing to use video transmissions. So, the choice. A. Connect the sparrow's fuel line feed to the freighter quickly. The sparrow loses one supply, or it seems suspicious. Leave it and call their bluff. So, um, I think it's a trap. <laughs> I think it's a trap. But I think we're gonna go for A anyway. Connect the sparrow's fuel line feed to the freighter quickly. The sparrow loses one supply. I think I'm gonna do that anyway, even though I think it's a trap but yeah we'll see boom result a as the fuel flows into the freighter lights flicker on across the vessel soon you're receiving video messages from the crew of the crew expressing their thanks ah okay we've been stuck out here for more than a week on minimal life support 
hoping someone would come by. Thank you for your generosity. You saved all our lives. The fader disappears into the distance and Perkins scratches his chin and comments. I know they say a good deed is its own reward, but personally, I would have liked something tangible. Cash? Upgrades? Something shiny? That is true. So even though it wasn't a trap, I do, I'm down to one supply now. So it feels like a trap. I'm not going to re read results, the other results. So this is goes back to the box and is never used again. So that was that. But we also have 007 there, which is a scenario. And I'm going to take a look at it because uh, I would, if I use Scout, my supply would go down to zero. So I guess I can't, I'm going to use it. So my uh, Sparrow now has zero supply. But let's take a look at number seven, what that is. It's a crash craft. Requirements, crash craft. But I don't have that requirement. And then when they say, if you don't have the requirement that says here, then you get your supply back and then you can continue exploring. So we're not doing that. So in that case, we are going up to 3.2 and using that supply anyway. So 3.2 is revealed. Dun, 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 dun. Boom, there is a lot of stuff here. Okay, so we have 97, which is a portal. Well, a jump basically to another system, I imagine. They have 008 and 121. So blue, by the way, is a side quest. Okay, um, white ones are the main story ones. So, um, yeah, it's either scenario 8 or 121 that you have to discover. Uh, very interesting. Or I could decide to not do it at all and explore 2.2, which remains unexplored. But exploring 2.2 would mean I go minus and start with stress in my next uh, scenario, which I don't really like. So 121 seems interesting. It's so far down. I'm going to take a look at 121. Okay, so number 121 is Chosek Monsters, but the requirements are preparation. We don't have preparation, so we can't do that one, so we get it back. <laughs> so we're not stressed, okay? So then we do number 8, which is the Chosek Moon, requirements and the Medallia, which we can do. But I think the scouting action also requires supply. So then we do go minus one. So we will start this one with one stress then. Okay, so it seems that the Chosek moon now will end up being world exploration. So uh, requirements in the medallia, which we have, because it's tagged here, right? And the medallia. And then objective, recover the repair package from the Chosek moon base. So let's read the story first, shall we? The journey is slow and anxious. None of the other pilots you talk to know who the enemy was or what they wanted. Most of the crew are too shaken up by the genocide to talk much anyway. Without the benefit of a warp drive, the Sparrow limps to Dabath Major without incident. Using the debris in the area from the destruction of Medellia, the Sparrow charts a course that keeps it off any potential enemy sensors. Everyone files into the briefing room. It is painfully obvious that there are far fewer chairs being occupied than when you last sat here only a short time ago. Standing in front of the large display, Captain Soma begins. We are in orbit around Chosek, the third moon of Dabath Major. You can be forgiven for not being familiar with it. It's a classified location known only to select high-ranking officials. Intrigued looks are exchanged between the groups in the room as Soma continues. Our current situation is more important than Chosek's classified status. All you need to know is that it's a military base and it offers a vital chance to repair and refuel. Okay, I made a mistake now. Uh, I was about to read home base because I thought I should tag it and then read it, but you only tag it once you already have it. I don't have home base, so I'm not gonna read the home base part. The captain clears her throat and continues. We have hailed Chosek. However, no one has been answering. The enemy may already have been there. You will be provided with an inventory of what we need to repair the jump drive, but let me stress something. This is a retrieval mission only. 
We have no indication that anyone is operating the station, so we have to assume the worst. Treat anyone you meet with suspicion, and stay in constant communication with the Sparrow. Soma looks down, momentarily showing fatigue. We've lost too many good people today. Far too many. So be careful out there. I do not want to lose any more. After landing your fighter, one look around tells you that place was abandoned in a hurry. Blaster marks are visible all around. A couple of ships are appended nearby as if they crashed just after takeoff. Containers are strewn about. What happened here? There is no one to be seen and you're glad to note no bodies either. Your optimism does not last though, as you soon notice trails of blood from the area. Has the enemy struck here already? Alright, so. Your squad has ascended to the Chosek moon and are about to embark on world exploration. Read rule book pages 29 to 32 to learn how to set up and play world explanation, exploration scenarios. So, basically, first of all, it says that you uh, have to set up everything. So, you flip over the pilot train, this one here. So, health seven, there you go. And I think these two go down to zero. Skill value, so the skill value is blue. So here we go. Uh, set energy using the shield track and determine by the number of players. One player, 10 energy. So that's actually 10, 10 energy. Okay. And um, so the skill value, I guess it doesn't matter. It is the, basically the shield track is energy. So I have 10 energy and my health is 7. All right. Okay. Then remove the world exploration deck associated with the scenario from the box. Place it face down to the side. Do not shuffle the deck. All right, so I'm going to do two things. I'm going to remove this, or I just put it on top of it, actually, that's better. And I'm going to get the deck. So it is a chosen, chosek move. All right. Okay, so remove the world exploration deck. Okay, take the world exploration card that says start here on the back and place it face up in front of the players and place all the miniatures on top of it. So let's put this here. I'll put it on the left then. And here I am. All right, cool. So the rest will be placed here. Okay, place, read the scenario story introduction, but I've already done that, all of that, yes. So we've now revealed this first part of the Chosek moon and there's a bunch of stuff that you can do when it's world exploration. Okay, so I already mentioned this is your, this is me, 7 health, I have 10 uh, energy that I can use, Stre stress is at 0, and then I have 2 strength and I also have 2 intelligence. The other stuff is uh, dexterity and charm, so my charm is at 0. <laughs> so anyway. During my turn, I can do a bunch of stuff. We are still going to use these five dice, all right? So I'm just gonna put this um, over here, all right? We're still gonna use the five dice and uh, we'll be using them to do actions. For example, you have three here with a die and two here with a die. That means that you are going to be using, uh, for example, let's say I wanna do action two here, which is move and explore. Those are the green and white numbers. You just roll two dice and hope you get what you need and basically uh, yellow is movement and orange is attack and of course this one you can use for both and if it's a stress die you increase your stress by one but most importantly start of your turn you will be uh, reducing your energy so i start with 10 so start of my turn it will go down to nine and then i'll do my actions some actions uh, require uh, some uh, energy and so on potentially but every round i'm spending energy if my energy is ever at zero then i can spend one stress and if my stress is ever at 10 then i start losing health instead of energy if i'm unconscious i lose the scenario although some scenarios when they don't have a failure uh, in there you just restart full health and everything uh, try again i guess i don't know i haven't uh, stumble upon anything like that yet. So the green ones are explore and move. You can also have a stop event, which is a red uh, stop thing. Then you have investigate as well, and skill check, which is basically your skill plus the die that you, dice that you need added up to hopefully get the number you want. The some actions will be repeatable. 
others not. So if you have an investigate and skill check after you finish them successfully, you'll put a black cube on top of it to show that you've done it and it cannot be redone. Um, also, when you are rolling to do an action, for example, if I want to do this, uh, well, for example, if I do an action that only uh, requires attack dice, then, uh, and I, I fail, then I can always spend one stress to re-roll, okay? Uh, once per action, if I'm not mistaken. Once per round, yeah, I can use it. Um, also, this action requires two dice. If I really want to make sure that I can do it, I can have three, four, or five. But of course, that will reduce my action that I can do in a round. So, in this um, moon exploration, my objective is to recover the repair package from the Trosek moon base to fix the sparrow. But of course, I have no way to know where it's where it is right i don't have any tips or whatever um so if i want to go to two i need to assign two dice to do that if i want to go up i need to assign one die but before i do anything else i decrease my energy by one so i'm going to go upwards because there are footprints going up so i'm going to do three before two so i'm going to assign one die so another reason why i want to potentially assign more die uh, dice is that if you roll a stress die then you don't need to use that stress die okay but i'm going to assign one and it's a movement so it's good enough so i explore three and i move into it oh wow uh, something happened here so if i want to <clears throat> explore this then i need to assign two dice so this die is already used so i'll put it on the side um there's also four to explore further upwards but i'm going to investigate by assigning two dice so it doesn't matter which two <clears throat> i mean i'm going to have a success anyway because it requires move or attack just assigning two just increases the chances of me getting stress uh, die but uh, i'm gonna I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take. Uh, I'm not gonna play it safe. I'm just gonna take two. Yeah. See. Boom. One stress. But I did the investigate, so I can read number two now. So number two, you crouch down and find a crowbar caked in blood. On your left is a set of footprints leading north. Gain plus one strength for the remainder of the scenario. So, plus one strength, um, the way that I am going to keep track of that is, <clears throat> I'm just going to put a cube on strength. Uh, potentially there are cards, I don't know if there's a specific way to keep track of that normally. I didn't read anything about that, but plus one, so I'll put plus one here for the rest. So, I'm just going to keep going upwards, um, four. It is just an attack die, so that's good. I discover four as well. Or explore four. And now I'm here. So basically, I'm at the end here now. Because for 21, I need two dice. For seven, I need three. So nothing more I can do there. So that phase ends. So that was the pilot action. Then end of round, you, you collect your action dice. Um, and then um, repeat phases one to three until blah, blah, blah. so one reduce energy so my energy is now at eight and then i am going to investigate first which requires two dice but then if i do the action here that requires uh, intelligence i need to have three greens but i already have two so i actually only need one green but it is repeatable until, of course, I have a success, then I can stop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna investigate first. Okay, I'm lucky. So I can read 21. Oh. 21. You examine the body on the ground. He has a grisly gash along the side of his head. It's a wonder he made it this far. His hand clutches a bloody piece of paper with a set of numbers scribbled on it. Oh, I should probably write these down. Um, now, the problem is, so I'm going to write these down. So, oh, we only have a little bit of space for notes. I'm going to do the top right corner. <laughs> 51, 90, 38, 40, 
11. There we go. So I remember it. It's probably going to be the code to some stash or whatever. Okay, so that's cool. So then I think I'm just going to assign uh, three dice um, to do the intelligence. But I already have two though. Maybe I can get away by assigning two dice. We'll only be, yeah, we'll do two dice. Let's see. Okay, so this was screen. So I only need to use one. So I assign one. This one is used though, for as far as I know. But I use one for the action. Actually, I need to double check. Okay, so I committed the dice, but only assigned one. So the stress does not happen, but it is used. So I do have three, so I do success. I do have a success, so I can read number seven. Okay, so we successfully did number seven. So let's read it. Number seven. Investigating. Success. You definitely hack into the door system, explore and move to card seven. Ah. Oh. Okay, so we hack to a new place. That's interesting. Oh, wow. Okay, we're inside somewhere now. Oh. So I still have one die left. Uh, I could check out the body, I guess for number 20. Let's take a look. Yeah, okay, that's good. So number 20. There is a dead body on the ground. You carefully step over it. <laughs> okay. All right, so at the end of the round, I get my dice back. I lose one energy. All right, so if I want to do 12, I need to roll two dice. Um, So, investigate 12. Oh, that's too bad. So, I do get one stress, but I can read 12. Project Rebound, entry 34, day 8. Something has gone terribly wrong. The subject woke in the middle of the night in a fit of rage. When confronted by security, they were unresponsive before attacking. It took five of the security team to subdue the subject, but not before they suffered blows, scratches, bites, and a broken limb. We have decided to place all patients under restraint. They have all responded in a similar frenzy and worse. Their bodies are bloating terribly. I worry that we will have to put a pause on testing until we can identify the cause. Lead scientist, Dr. Romero. Okay, so we're in the middle of a... Uh... <laughs> of a um, research thing. And also because I completed this, I have to put this on it, um, put one here. And I also, I'm just gonna put the sparrow on the side because I'm gonna have to put a bunch of stuff there. Put one here and there and here. Those are all done already. Okay. So then I can go down or I can go to the right. Mm, I think I'll go to the right. Maybe I'm skipping some stuff because the base is hacked in there, but I ignored the entrance. I'll go to the right because it only requires one die. Yeah, cool. So number eight. I can always return to the previous places, right? Okay, so a uh, jacket on the floor and then a table with stuff on there. Let's take a look at the jacket first. So, um, thinking now, which ones are I? I've used these three already. So one for the jacket. Ah, it's a stress again. I'm getting so stressed with 25. 25. You fleece the jacket on the ground, looking for a key pass or anything at all useful. Unfortunately, it has nothing but lint. Great. And then I do 22. Okay, that's okay. 
22. Project Rebound, entry 42, day 8. Everyone else is gone. The orderlies that had undergone testing went mad two days ago and destroyed the facilities. They barely appear human any longer. In the bedlam, our subjects got free. I've never seen such horrors. Most members of the base are murdered. Those who have survived have been infected with this madness. There's no escape, and any hope of communication is long destroyed. All I can do is continue to hide and wait for the end. Lead scientist, Dr. Romero. Okay, this is pretty bad. Makes me wonder if I should keep going in, because I think I'm going to have to fight for sure. But I've done everything, so energy goes down, and my dice are available for use again. So I can do 11, which is basically also just research, but it requires three dice. So I'll do that. Okay, another stress. Oh. So, I do that, 11, Let's see what it says. A shimmer catches your eye, prompting you to tentatively reach your hand towards it. Immediately a translite shield energizes around the room of cargo boxes. A keypad is on the wall to your right. The security system appears to be high caliber. You have been warned that incorrect codes will trigger self-defense mechanisms. What do you do? Do nothing, continue exploration, or enter a code and go to 28. Well, I wrote down the code, 51, 90, 38, and so on, so the first one. So I'm gonna go to 28. So I enter the first code and I go to 28. 51, 90, 38, 40, 11. The shield disappears. Explore and move to card 12. Okay. So I guess it's maybe here. Yeah, like this, okay. So I'm now here. I have two dice left. It's getting more and more difficult to uh, check everything out. It requires more and more dice. And it says stop 14. So I have to read 14. Coming here was a mistake, is your first thought after hearing a high pitched wailing. Startling the group, a terrifying creature jumps into visibility behind a glass wall. It proceeds to repeatedly smash its body against that glass wall in an attempt to get at you. The ugly beast looks humanoid, except for the tendrils writhing out of unseen openings in its body, like a tentacled monster escaping its human confines. Cracks in the glass spiderweb from impact, and before you can act, it shatters. You only have a moment to decide how to react as a creature jumps through the window. Explore and reveal cards 1 to 12. Place a red cube on cards 10, 12, and 4 to signify the creatures. So, 1 to 12. Thirty-eight. Creature encounter. This is your action dice as a normal action would. What would you do? Read the entry corresponding to the number of assigned action dice to the skill check chosen. Go to 37 after performing the creature encounter for the first time. So I either run or I fight. A strength. Strength is a three. So I'm going to fight, obviously. And I assign two dice. So the result of those two dice, I'm going to put this here now, is one more so i have four three plus one is four four plus you fight and kill the creature remove a cube from the card okay done success you get back to your ships just in time oh wait, wait no that's it no no no. there's no success yet it's not finished yet <laughs> uh, go to 37 after performing the creature con okay so 37. there is no end to these creatures and they seem to be spreading throughout the research facility at the beginning of each round, spawn one creature, using a red cube, in each explored card adjacent to a card with a creature in it. No more than one creature can be in a single tile. If there are no creatures on the board at the beginning of a round, spawn one creature on cards 4 and 10. If a pilot is in the room and a creature spawns on the same tile, or if a pilot moves onto a cre card with a creature, the pilot must perform a creature encounter. Okay, so he fights. The pilot has no available action dice to perform the creature encounter at the start of the next turn. 
If you successfully run, it ends the action phase. If you fight, you can perform the action phase as normal. So basically, if you run away, you can do, do nothing else anymore. Okay. So I did uh, everything there, right? I just arrived and I did nothing there. I just did the stop action. So I guess I used all my cards here. So my energy goes down to five. And then it says, the beginning of each round, a red cube in each explored card adjacent to a card with a creature on it. So, boom, and boom. And here, here, and then here again. So I'm gonna have to fight again. So I once again assign two dice. So if I have four or more, I just need one hit. I do have one hit, but it's a stress. Uh, so I'm at five, but this creature is destroyed. And then I can continue my regular um, action. But the problem is that um, I'm looking for stuff, right? So I think I am where I'm supposed to be. So I'm going to do number four, actually number 23, and see what it does. No stress, but it's really good. Okay, so number 23. 23. You force open the crates until you chance upon the correct one. Inside is the X-shaped crystal that makes a jump drive possible. You stuff it into your backpack as you hear not too distant sounds of screeching and rustling feet. It's time to get out of here, and quick. Read the success conclusion after all conscious Pilots reach card one. Okay, so I have to get to one now. So I've used all my dice again. So energy goes down to four, and then enemies spawn in the cards next to boom, 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 boom. Oh my goodness, and boom. So basically, there's enemies everywhere now. Um, Yeah. Actually, except for, except for here. So I need to go to card one, which is here. So the shortest way is around, I guess. One, two, three, four, five. Or one, two, three, four, five. You can go this way as well. Mm. Of course, you have to wonder, is it worth it to check other stuff while we're there? Well, first of all, I have to fight. Um, and I'm going to sign one die. Hopefully, it's not movement. It is not movement. Cool. So, once again, I kill the creature. Too bad I don't get anything for it. Uh, then I'm going to spend three to do four. Which is all very nice, cool. So I get to do number four. It's successful, so I cover it up. Number four. These goods appear locked tight and there's no way in. There's no reason to make noise trying to force them open. <sighs> so annoying. Okay, so I can move into a room with a creature. Um, I thought... Oh, yeah. I can move into the room without an available die, um, and then the creature will be fought next round. So I'm gonna go there and uh, maybe check some stuff here. So, yeah, I move here, and then a new round starts. I lose energy, I'm down to three, and then I roll one die to fight. It's a stress die, fantastic. Stress goes up but it's dead. Then I use one die to go down, which is a movement. Hop. And then I'm gonna use one die for 16, which is good enough. So 16 is... The screen in the terminal has an unopened incoming message. 
No possibility of aid or pickup at this time. Project Rebound must be kept secret. Please resolve issue on your end. No further communication. Akarios Institute Command. The message is from several days ago. All right. And then I can do nine with two dice. And that is correct. Good. So number nine. You find a med kit. You have pilot to full health. I'm already at full health. Too bad. But it's repeatable. So I can find multiple health, health kits, I guess. Wait, did I fight this one? Mm. Well, I guess I'll fight him next round. Sorry. Okay, so that is over. Energy goes on to two. The enemy spawn. Poof, poof. And another one there. So once again, I assign one die to fight. And it's just movement, so it's three. You fight and kill the creature, but you take one damage. Okay, so not six. And then I use one die to move. Good. Hup. Then I do, uh, so there's a hand thing, but you need three movements. And the hand means, what is it again? Dexterity. So that actually might be something useful, but I don't have the dice for it yet. So I am going to do six and, oh, I have to fight actually. So I use one die to fight. I kill it, no problem is there. Then I use one die for six and one for 10. So. Six, okay. So six is budget rebound entry 16 day two. We were told that we would have willing volunteers. Instead, the high command has sent us prisoners working off their sentences. Nonetheless, they seem compliant enough. Early testing seems optimistic. One note, subjects wake with a tremendous hunger, but that's expected with their elevated metabolism. Lead scientist, Dr. Romero. And then 10. Oh, stress. Um, number 10. You look through the glass and see a stack of crates, on top of which is an egg-shaped crystal. That's it. That must be what you came for. Now you just need to find a way in. Oh, okay, you just look through the window, basically, and see it there. Okay, it's kind of wasted. I got this one energy. And then I'm going to assign Oh yeah, and then creature spawn again. The question is, should I really go for it? First, use one die to fight. So I take one damage, and then I use four dice to try and open that. And I fail, so nothing happens. Although I can take one stress to reroll uh, as many dice as I want. Okay. So I'm gonna reroll these two because I only need one green. Yeah, I do have three green now, so I can read 17. And then I really need to get out. Oh yeah, and I killed this. 17. Success, you scale the crates and at the top there's one with a conventional tumbler lock. The lock appears to be broken. A firm talk confirms, confirms your suspicion as the lock falls off. Gain 10 credits. Yeah. Okay, cool. 35. Okay. Uh, I have nothing left. So my energy is now at zero. A new monster spawns here. And I really have to try to get to the exit now. So I fight. I defeat it. I will die to move forward, which is another fight, so it's good. I have to fight again. Die. It's a stress die, which is bad, but it's defeated nonetheless. Um, then I'm gonna go to the left again, which is perfect, and then fight the last one which is also dead. So it says, um, read the entry corresponding to the number of assigned action dice to this good. Go to 37 after performing the creature encounter for the first time. Okay, I did already. Well, it's 23, right? 
read the success conclusion after all conscious pilots reach card one. So I reached card card one. So now I read success because I didn't make it, uh, albeit it was quite close. I kind of wanted to explore a little bit more, like the strength one, but I think that was for opening the door. Ah, uh, here, this one could have been cool because it would have been fairly easy for me to do. Oh well. So, um, success. You get back to your ships just in time. The creatures swarm towards you, but a few blasts from your ship's aft cannons clear a number of them away. You pull back on the controls and lift away, leaving the chaos below you. You can't, back, you can't get back to this barrel's hangar fast enough. Once you have docked, you sit in your cockpit, catching your breath, trying to make sense of what you've just seen. You barely notice Grease approaching, laughing as she looks at you. The look on your face! Ha! Huh, I bet you haven't been that scared since your mama came after you with a wooden spoon. There's an awkward silence, and the pilots stare blankly at her, still too shaken to get angry. Grease shrugs, obliviously. Ah, for crying out loud. Get over it. You're all here. You've got all your fingers and toes. That's better than most people today. Now where's my equipment? Okay, first of all, I'm gonna put the sparrow back. The round doesn't matter, actually. So let's uh, back to one. So I get the sparrow back. It says four supply. Good. And I get a pilot skill. Interesting. So I'm going to keep going up that track that I've been going. So it's either increasing my ship or remove a zero. I think I'm going to go for a ship ability, even though I need to have two. Because I can increase hull and so on, which is very nice. All right, so one pilot skill and go to scenario nine. Okay, let me quickly check what it is. Okay, I'm gonna stop here actually. I think this gave you a very nice view of what the world exploration is and also space exploration. Um, it was pretty cool, I almost died. I actually really wanna know what eight was, but I guess that's for a second playthrough or whatever. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool. There was a sense of urgency as you are slowly losing health and energy. Yeah, it was nice. It was cool. And um, kind of curious to see if this project stuff will come back. At the moment, the, the, the story really feels like Bellastar Galactica meets the Expanse. The Expanse with the creatures, Bellastar Galactica with the huge attack, unexpected, we have to run, you know. Okay, cool. So now we're basically back at the ship, but we're not really back at the ship because it's scenario nine. So I guess we're now stuck on this one here and then uh, save it like that. And I don't know if we're going to have a chance to check 2.2 or if we're going to jump away already. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, that was it. My name is Joachim. So, so many games with the time. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.